I'm gonna do a little vlog right now. So I have a renter that I just set up in the MLS for rental properties and he just texted me and told me he wanted to buy. I'm gonna record this and show you how I convince a renter to turn into an active buyer right now. So, I mean, hopefully it works. Let's see if it works. I think it will. All right, so I'm gonna call him right now. Hey man, it's getting after it, bro. <laughs> yeah, James, sorry about that, man. We we were talking before, because I know, you know, you had mentioned that buying, you know, was kind of on your mind a little bit right now. So I know that renting is probably a better option for you just because you want to see what happens with the market. Is that what you said before? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I sold my house uh, about two years ago, got a divorce situation, put the money in the bank. Um, I don't have any debt, you know, nothing else. I can't wipe out, click of a button. Um, you know, my vehicles or my truck and my car are both paid for, um, I'm a corporate pilot, so I have money there and my roommates bring in about 2,100 a month. So, um, renting a place for 2,500 to 3,000 is not really a big deal. Um, buying a place isn't too horrible to do, even though these prices are a little inflated right now. Um, my only thing is I don't know if I would be able to capture a house quickly on the slight downturn that we'll see before it goes through the unattainable roof in the future. That's exactly my thoughts, actually. So I've been researching this and studying this for a while. Obviously, you know, I do a lot of deals. I'm doing hundreds of deals every single year. So I see this like on the front lines. And let me tell you, man, it's an election year. And do you know what happens every single election year? Yep. <laughs> Wait, what What happens? What happens? Before I tell you. Freaking market goes up, drops down right beforehand, and then after it get up, gets all settled out, it goes back up again. Well, so, all right, so well, the, the interest rates go down during election year, right? So interest rates are going to start going down probably around April or May is my guess. The Fed already came out and said that they're going to cut rates three times this year. I mean, it happens like clockwork every election year. And then what happens when interest rates go down? House prices go up. House prices go up and inventory goes down. So that means more demand and less supply, right? Every single time they drop the interest rates by one percentage point, they get 3 million buyers to enter the market. That's a lot of fucking buyers that are going to come into the market. So what you just said is accurate, right? Because that means that if, let's say they drop it two percentage points, you know, it goes from, we're hovering right around 7% right now. Let's say they drop it down to 5%, you know what I mean? 5.5%. We're going to have millions of extra buyers in the market, especially here in South Florida. It's going to be a flood. And all of these homes that you're looking at right now, let's say you find one for half a mil. And in nine months from now, you know, when the rates are at the absolute lowest come October or so, what do you think that price is going to be? It's probably going to be like 550, 575, you know, like that yeah, home is, it's going to, yeah, dude, it's going to be like, uh, you think it's hard to buy like a house now, forget it, like forget it. Once that happens, right. it's just going to be a, a nightmare. And here's what I think is going to happen, right? Over the course of like after the election, right? Over the course of 2025, I think they're going to drop the rates again. I, that's what I think is going to happen. They're going to start dropping the rates again because, you know, the price of homes are going to go up. People are going to be like, oh, I can't buy a house anymore. Like like they can buy one now anyways, like they can't. Uh, so all of a sudden now, the pro probably the prices of homes are probably going to start going down again, but it's going to take years to recover. You know, it's just like, just like before. In 2020, we had the peak of the market in like June 2022. Sorry, 2022, we had the peak of the market. And what is it? Like, it's like just basically came down now like now I feel like we're at the bottom right now and that's about a year almost that was almost two years ago uh come come June that's going to be two years so it's going to take a lot of time for the market to readjust again so if you know in my opinion in my opinion I actually think right now is one of the best times to buy a house you know like the inflation of the money that's part of the reason why these houses are so much is because they're not so much there's they're still the same value but in our dollars dropped in its value that it takes four dollars to get a house yes that is true as well and they, they want to get inflation down to two percent i think we're hovering at 3.1 percent right now if i'm not mistaken um they want to get that down so you know a lot of factors play into it as well uh and i i 100 agree but i, I the, what i really think is if you are considering it right now if you have the cash because you probably have like 30 grand that you can put down on a house right Easily, man. Easily. 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 There you go. Look at that. Look at that. So you have easily 30 grand you could throw on a house because all you really need is 5%. You don't need a crazy amount of money to buy a house. 
who's in cost on what would you want to uh, buy at what, what like price point just think the um just to backtrack and then come loop back into where you're at and go forward um I'm, I ran my 2023 taxes. I'm, I have my account doing the 2022s right now because I was going to go straight for, I think what they call it, DSCR loan or something where you don't put up any kind of numbers. You just go straight with cash, 20% down, and make a run for it. And that became a pain in my ass. So I told my account, I'm like, just get the taxes filed as fast as possible. And I'm going to give a shit what they say. Just freaking get them, get them done, get them filed. Let's get these on record and go for what you're saying, which is the, like, 5% down. Dude, for me... Putting 5% down on these houses is, like, I don't sweat it. Like, you know how people sweat buying a house? Yeah. They have to put up, like, 20, 30 grand. Like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, our nest egg life savings. Yeah. Like, dude, 5% down. I mean, 10% on a $300,000 house is, you know. 30 grand. 30 grand. So, 5% down on a $300,000 house is 15 grand. Like, yeah. That's cake work, dude. Like, I would do that and not even lose sleep at night, bro. That's what I'm saying. So you can put down, like you just said, the 15 grand. Well, obviously you're going to get a house that's more expensive than 300 grand. Uh, yeah, 300 grand gets you nothing in Florida now at this point. Um, you know, the median home price is 460 right now. So um, you know, maybe you get something around like 450, 500, 550, something around that ballpark, and you put down like 20, 25 thousand dollars, and then closing costs typically are going to be around eight, nine, 10 grand. You know, depending on the house. So that's not bad. So all out of pocket. Well, people you're still. Oh, well, from your experience, because you're way more recent than mine, are people still splitting closing costs, or is the seller just being like, F you, you eat it? No, they don't, no, they're not splitting closing costs, no way. <laughs> no yeah. way, just an offer accepted right now is actually, it's actually so, somewhat challenging. Um, somewhat challenging even to get an offer accepted now, because people are starting to realize exactly everything I just said, that the rates, they're about to go down, the price of homes are about to go up, so people are starting to like, I don't want to say panic, but people are starting to realize, hey, it's probably a good time to buy a house now. Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait years, years to get into a similar situation again, you know, with high interest rates. So, and they, this is the beauty of it that I didn't even mention before. You can refinance, and I'm sure you know this, you're a smart guy. I'm, you can refinance come September, October when the rates are at their absolute lowest point, you know, obviously, because that's going to be right before the election. And historically, just go and look it up every four years. That's the lowest point of mortgage rates right around September, October. You could just refinance right then and there and you'll get the cheapest price of a house that you could possibly get like in this market. And then you'll get the cheapest interest rates without having to pay an arm and a leg for a home. Now, do you, does your MLS have access to, because I know this is simmering in the background, I know it, um, does your MLS have access to, um, what do you call it, bank the bank buyout ones, the short sales? So, yes, we do have access to that. Now, typically those, you're going to have to bid against people. Um, I mean, short sales, REOs, yes, we can do them. And they just get a little bit tricky, you know what I mean? I mean, they want the most money down possible. It's like a foreclosure, you know? Like, you can't buy a foreclosure unless you're doing cash. Otherwise, you're going to get beat by a cash offer. So it's a little bit similar. But, yeah, we do have them. You know, they're few and far between. Honestly, man, though, I wouldn't really put too much credence into that. You know, I would kind of more yeah. go for just a regular old house that you can fix up, you know? Like, I mean, if you want to get something renovated, fantastic. But if not, it doesn't really matter because you can fix it up. Like, listen, at the end of the day, you know, if you buy a $500,000 home and and you put in 50 grand, do you, how much do you think that house is gonna be worth after you put that 50 grand in? Uh, maybe six. Exactly. 50 grand. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Like, it's not gonna be 550. Like, you're not over improving the house. You never wanna over improve. I just had this buyer that, or sorry, I had a, I had a seller, I'm working with a buyer right now, and I had a seller that put in $150,000 into a home, and the neighborhood, the comps, weren't, weren't there, man. We're not there, so they got stuck breaking even on the house because they over improved. As long as you don't do that and you do the, the right upgrades, you'll make money on the house. That's, why, that's, what, that's, that's what people do for a living, flipping houses. So. This brings to 2024. I don't even want to flip a house, man. I just want a place to live. I exactly. I like, watch this crap go on, and I'm like, this is nuts, dude. Yeah, dude, you're, and you're just pissing money away. Listen, uh, it's not bad renting a place, you know. I even rent right now, you know. I'm buying homes right now, though, uh, because of everything I just said. But like I said before, renting is not, like, terrible. It's not the end of the world, you know. If you can't afford the down payment, I understand, then you have to rent. Uh, but in your situation, when you can, why give equity to the owners of property? You're just paying the owner's mortgages, their taxes, their interest, their everything. You're paying everything imaginable, and you're not going to have anything. It's an unrecoverable cost. Renting is 100% unrecoverable. So why not just get into your own home? Yes, maybe the mortgage might, well, everything combined, you know, monthly payments might be a little bit more. 
more than they would be if you rented the equivalent house right now. But once you refinance, you know, once your house value goes up in price, it's going to make up for it in the long run, you know? So we, you know, with obviously appreciation. So I personally think in your situation, I think it's not a bad idea, you know, to buy a house right now. Um, what are your thoughts? My only thought would be, you know, the reason for renting, like everything you said is valid. Like you didn't say anything not valid. My only reasoning for renting would be to sidestep market downturn, you know, when there's an oversaturation and everybody's trying to sell. And I've been watching the market myself too and seeing seeing a drop a percentage point or two. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is the top of the peak where it turns and goes the other direction. But like we both know, it only goes that direction for so long. And how deep does it go? We don't know. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Now he is like, freaking hot haven because there's so much commerce down here and all the money sits down here it's like i'm not in south dakota or wyoming i'm in freaking southeast florida and palm beach county like this is a high cost of living area it is yeah it became that way it didn't used to be that way but it became that way so i think that we should give it a shot you know what i mean and hey listen if you end up saying all right i just want to rent you know uh, in the long run fine whatever you know well, I think just giving it a shot is not a terrible idea. So let me do this, right? I already have you set up, uh, you know, for rentals right now in the MLS. You know, we can do that. Of course, that's simple and easy. You know, we'll, like I said before, we'll do the rent spree, credit background report, rental application, you know, all of that good stuff. We'll get the pre-approval really quick, you know, and then we'll go check out the ones that say yes. So that's easy enough. Uh, and then for buying, I think, let me do this. Let me set you up on the MLS lease or purchases just so you can see what's out there right now. So I can't remember, what areas did you want to be in again? Uh, I mean, West Palm down the point. Would be all right, I got that all set. Like, what was the max price you could possibly do? The last price I'd want to do before I start renting would be like three fifty. And I know that's a freaking low number in this market. No, it's it's yes. yeah, it's. I mean, you can't get it. Yeah, that's it's almost impossible. It's like that's like non-existent. So let me do this. I'm gonna go to four fifty because three fifty okay. is not even like practical, honestly. Um, unless you want like a condo. I mean, did you want a condo? No, single family home. No, no, no. Yeah, four fifty is like you're not you're not nothing's happening under four fifty. Otherwise, you know, you might be in a place where, you know, you might not potentially want to be. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then three beds, two baths, obviously minimum. Um, and what's the square footage that you need minimum? Uh, I don't know how the square footage you need as long as it's compensated with some kind of yard in the back where I can build out 11, 1200 square foot house but it has a yard in the back versus a 1200 square foot house that has nowhere to build out on, then I can't add anything to it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so I'll do 12 minimum. All right, so even doing that, I mean, there's only, you know, there's only 37 places up to 450 because that's just like, you know, you're not, you're not, I would... I would really stick towards the 450 range. Um, I'm going to send you everything, though. You know, I'm not doing any minimums for you. So, and then, wait, did you get a pre-approval yet? Have you been pre-approved? Uh, yeah, through Blue Chip, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go through their lending company. I'm going to go through somebody else. I, I don't like their, uh, their sales agent. Okay. Um, I mean, I have an amazing, incredible lender, one of the best in South Florida. Did you want me to set, set him up with you? or? Yeah. Who is it? Ryan Brandenberger with Cross Country Mortgage. Have you heard of him? No, but yeah, he can send my contact info. Oh, he's incredible. Yeah, he's incredible. I'll set up a three-way text, you know, so we can chat. I'll introduce you. He's, he's incredible. What, what did you get the pre-approval for? Uh, I think it was like 400 Oh, so you could go up a little bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, the thing is, like, here's the funny thing, and the other thing, too. Like, this is a stage one of a multi-stage idea, and with the rental income, I can't use the rental income on a house that I don't own. So, like, that doesn't count toward my income. I'm like, well, it's on my bank statements because it goes to my bank, so why does it not count as income? Yeah, I'm going to have Ryan chat with you about that. He's the expert at mortgages, you know, uh, I am with the houses. So, but yeah, hundred um, percent, that's accurate right there. So, all right, what I did was right. I just, I just set up the MLS for you. So at least we got going with all the properties. So now obviously you're gonna be the first one to see one of these new listings that hit the market. Believe it or not, it's getting a little competitive right now. So I know you're not in like a crazy rush, but you can close anytime, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Um, so, yeah, I'll set you up with Ryan. We'll work on a pre-approval. I mean, listen, man, we could do both. We could do the renting route. We can do the buying route. I mean, it's really totally up to you. After everything we just talked about, what do you think you're kind of like leaning towards now? I don't have a leaning one way or another. You know, I'm kind of like, I don't have, you know what's funny is I would have more of a time issue than I have a cash flow issue. 
I don't have cash flow issues. And I mean, granted, they're still in this house that I live in. It's like, I'm kind of like, well, you know, like, I don't want to go the eviction route, but if I don't have anywhere to go, you know, if I haven't found a place to buy or found a place to rent, no, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not going to let that happen. I will not let you get evicted. I won't, I won't let you basically not find a rental or a house to purchase. I will make sure, listen, man, I'm an expert at this. This is all I do 16 hours a day. All right. There is no chance in hell. I will let you down here. I will, I will at least at the very, very least get you into a rental, you know, Hopefully a purchase, you know, if you want to go that route. Because wait, how how long do you think you have? Like 30 days? Minimum. Okay, so you got a little bit more. So 30 to 60 probably? Yeah, because the lady keeps pressuring me to like, can I agree to be out by the 18th? I'm like, no, I'm not agreeing to that. I'm like, I took care of your house for two years. I told you I would buy it. I told you I would buy it for what you wanted for it. And you decided to go with this quote unquote cash offer. Whereas you and I could have closed this deal already. But then with this, you could have had your money and been out the door. But you got snowed by somebody and listened to the wrong person, and now you're going to have to wait even longer. So, you know, I'm not going to be in a rush. I wasn't in a rush to buy my car. I wasn't in a rush to buy my truck. You know, like, I do good deals by not being in a rush. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, yeah. I'm not in a rush now, dude. No. I don't care. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it happen for you. You know, rush, no rush, doesn't matter. Um, okay, cool. So, I just set up a text thread with Ryan. So, you know, we'll start working on a second pre-approval for you. At least we know, you know, at this point that you can get into a place like four or 450, I'm sure. Take a look at all those. I mean, what did you want to do then with the rental? Did you want to attempt to try to start applying for property? I think that's wise if we do both at the same time, like get the pre-approval, we'll start applying for some rentals and kind of just like see where the chips fall. You know what I mean? Like if you end up saying, all right, let's just go with the rental, then fantastic, we'll do that. But then if we find a house that you like at the same time or something, and you're like, all right, well, this will work, then we'll do that. Yeah, exactly. You know, parking's a thing where, you know, um, like I said, I have three roommates. I own two vehicles myself. So, you know, we don't need something that has like a two car parking in front. You know, like when I go to look at buying a place, I look at places where I can stone out the front yard and park vehicles in the front yard. Yeah, this is the way Palm Beach County is going. You want to live here and work here, you got to have roommates. Yeah, unfortunately, man, it's getting freaking expensive. I need a house 24-7 anyway. I'm not raising a family. We fly planes, dude. We're only here for like a week or two, and then we fly out for a while, and then we come back in. We don't use the house 100% all the time. You don't really care that much. It doesn't have to be the craziest house on, uh, available. It doesn't have to be like done up soup to nuts, you know? Right. It just needs the water to work, the electricity to work, and the roof not falling in. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, I mean, that's easy criteria. So, <laughs> so that's good. So that's good. Yeah, okay. That's, that's good. That's good. So, all right, here's what we'll do. No, no, no HOA? Yeah, let's go. No HOA, CBS Construction. Yeah, because I'm parking four or five vehicles in the driveway. HOAs get freaked out about that. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they do. You can already you know. see where it's going. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So no HOA. Before in Cypress Creeks. Yeah, that's why I was worried about money because I sold the house from in there. Jeez, probably made a fortune, huh? Uh, well, I had to break it off with the wife, so a little bit. But yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm fine, comfortable. I'm not worried about closing on a house. It doesn't freak me out. Yeah. All right, so I mean, we're set for both right now. Did you want me to also send you the rent spree application so we can start firing out some offers for some rentals in case we're going to go that route? Yeah, do they care? Like, do the owners care if there's one person on the lease or do they have more people on the lease? Like, what's the, the look on that? Yeah, I mean, technically any adult over 18 is supposed to be on the lease agreement. You know what I mean? So anybody living there, you know, is supposed to be on there. I have to get my roommates on board with that stuff because I'm kind of like, dude, you know, if I get stationed somewhere else, then we need to put somebody else on my slide. Exactly, um, exactly. So let's do that. So I just guarantee the rent myself. Yeah. You know, like, look, I, you know, it's my credit on the line. It's my ass on the line. Like, even if somebody else doesn't pay, I'm still going to pay it anyway. So, you know, I'm like, why are they getting credit for being on the lease if I'm the one that's ensuring that the rent gets paid? Yeah, that, there's, there's no credit anyways, honestly, man. They don't, like, report anything to any credit bureaus, you know, for lease agreements. Um, so it doesn't even doesn't even matter either way. So, all right, I just sent you yours on rent spree. It's just the credit background eviction report, rental application, proof of income, driver's license, you know, and then we'll fire out the pre-offer. If the owner says yes, I'll call you up and be like, hey, James, we've got to go see it right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go up Palm Beach for a little bit, too. So, you know, something pops up in that area, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool, you know. Yeah. Old West Palm's good, you know, like College Park. Yeah, yeah. Wherever wherever you want to be, man, that's what we'll do, you know? Wherever you want to be. So, wait, I just sent you yours. What's your roommate's email? I don't even have it, dude. It's all cash what? and carry. 
why don't you why don't you text me in? Yeah, te- text me your roommate's email. You know, I'll get him his over. Both of you got to do it, obviously. And we'll start firing them out, you know, and whoever says yes, you know, we'll kind of go from there. All right, cool, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Do you have any other questions right now? Not really, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Pretty simple. Pretty, pretty simple, man, pretty simple. So, cool, all right, um, yeah, send me his email, you know, get that filled out. Talk to Ryan about the pre-approval so maybe we can go the buying route and, you know, we'll get you a place, a rental, a purchase, whatever works. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Awesome, man. Awesome. No problem at all. And well, have a good rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, you too, man. Thanks, man. All right. Bye. Yeah. All right. So I just did, I guess, like a, a sales call to try to turn a renter into a buyer. Very nice guy. You know what I mean? And... You guys heard exactly what I just said to him. So if he wants to go the rental route, fantastic. Let's do a rental. I don't care. I still get half a month's rent commission for that. You know what I mean? He's happy. He gets into a place, you know, because the owner is selling the property that he's living in right now, which can be pretty scary and nervous. He didn't seem too afraid at all. He was like, I don't care. I'll get evicted, but I don't want that to happen. So, you know, if, uh, if I can get him a place and not get him evicted within the next like month or two, that's the ultimate goal. And if it has to be a rental, it's got to be a rental, whatever. Right. Um, I mean, I think the rent price he's looking at is right around three grand or so. So that's like a $1,500 commission, which is not that bad at all. You know, I charge a tiny little transaction fee. So it's a decent commission for me and it's really not that much work. It's like two hours of work. You know, I'm helping them out. I know all the areas, you know, and everything. I get the offers in for them. We do it a really, really smart way. But if he wants to buy a house, that's even better. Okay. Cause I'm setting them up with my lender. Um, so yeah, we're going to try to possibly get him into a purchase, but you see how easy that was just talking to him like a person, talking to him like a friend. I do all of my real estate calls just like this. You know, I'm just talking to him like a human being. And if he wants to buy, that would be great, but I'm not going to pressure him into doing it. You know, I don't want him to make a bad decision and get something that he doesn't want, you know, so I'm not going to like force him into buying if he wants to rent. Um, so either way, I'm going to help him out. You know, I, I think that's where a lot of realtors mistakes is when they start going that route of, Oh, you have to do this buy, you know, it's why would you want to rent? Like, like buy, 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 and, and shoving it down their throats. No shot. I'm ever doing that, you know, cause I've done that before in the past when I was like a, a newer realtor and it was a big mistake. You know, they end up saying, Oh my God, you know, what am I doing right now? I really didn't want to do this. You talked me into it. Uh, so I just kind of lay out the facts, you know, I lay out, I lay out all the info that I have and I set him up, you know, with all the property so he can look at them. And then I let him make a decision. Like, what do you want to do? You want to rent? You want to buy? You, you know everything now. You see everything. You know, which direction do you want to go? And usually it works out incredibly well for me that way. I mean, I do anywhere from five to 10 purchases per year just off of this strategy of just working with renters only. You know, I'll still do a lot of purchases every single year uh, just because of that, you know, and then a lot of my renters will eventually turn into buyers. Like imagine this guy rents, you know, James, he rents right now. And you heard him in a year from now, you know, or maybe two years from now, whatever it may be, he's going to want to buy. And since I'm taking my time to help him now and, you know, get him into a rental now, if he doesn't want to buy right now, he's going to use me again in a year or two to purchase a house. So maybe I don't get it now, but no big deal. You know, and if you keep stacking these up and doing a lot of these, if you're doing, you know, 10, 20, 30 of these every single month, you know, you're going to have a massive data. And then eventually in a year or two, you know, you're going to have a lot of your renters, as long as you're keeping in touch with them, turn into buyers. And I mean, I do teach this in my program too, uh, richardrentals.com, you know, shameless plug over here. It does work though, as you can tell. You know, uh, it does absolutely work working with renters, turning them into buyers. I mean, it all works. So, yeah, I'm going to drop a link in the description if you guys want to check out my program. It's just www.richardrentals.com. I teach agents how to work with renters and then also how to turn your renters into buyers. Exactly what I just did right now. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is like a little vlog that I wanted to do uh, just of a call of turning a renter into a buyer. If you like the video, hit the like button. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought of how that conversation went. And subscribe to my channel if you like videos like this. I'm going to be dropping videos, you know, one or two times per week. I slowed down a little bit. I'm going to try to drop a little bit more. If you want any requested videos, drop them in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. All right, peace.